All right, so you do not want to skimp on your warm out, warm up as part of your workout because the warm up is going to allow you to perform at a much higher level during your workout. So that's why we do spend a healthy chunk of time doing all the important things in a warm up that will allow you to be much more effective through your neuromuscular system throughout the main meat of the workout while also uh, preventing injury. And then when you're done your workout, you can walk away from it or you can do a little bit of stretching. So we do want to make these uh, warm-ups pretty efficient. So we're rolling first, a little bit of foam rolling. So pick the areas that you need, what your body is calling to you. And then I'll provide guidance at different times as well. So whether it's, you know, your upper back, especially if you're just working out after, you know, working all day or something, that can be an area that you need to address the glutes, hamstrings, calves, all high need areas, but really you could argue everything. But again, you don't want to be spending 15 minutes on the foam roller and still have to work through some other things to properly warm up um, everything. Uh, so you just want to pick and choose with each workout. You're doing multiple workouts a week, so you have plenty of time to amply foam roll um, everything. My T band might be another area. And just make sure whatever you're rolling, you're getting through the full range of motion and you're getting the motion. If you have so many pain points that you really can't roll them too effectively with the foam roller, you want to think about using a massage stick instead or a Theragun, or you just want to be much more consistent with getting on your roller and spending a little extra time. Um, because in the long run, that's going to benefit your workouts. And so we're always looking for those uh, performance enhancements. And if your body is just so bound up and so tight, you're not going to be able to um, get that, okay? So you just wanna kind of mix and match as you go, doing what is best. So, you know, when we get to the hamstrings and calves, it's not always comfortable to have to hold ourselves up off the floor to be able to roll those areas. It's more efficient to do both at the same time in terms of both legs. It's a little bit more effective to do one at a time Plus, you get a little support with the free leg if you're doing one at a time. So it doesn't feel, you know, quite so heavy to be on your hands and have that tension going up through your elbows and your shoulders. Okay? So when you're working out on your own, it's helpful to just set a timer to try and get you into a space where you can roll through all the critical areas in about three minutes. From there, it's a great idea to, in the best time, to do some stretching. Hip flexors can be a really important area to stretch. That's usually where we're tightest, especially if you're coming in from being in the car or having worked all day. So getting into that half kneeling position, get the pelvis straight, press a little forward into the front of the leg. It's just gonna benefit all those lower body exercises that you're gonna do in your workout. And we're not talking, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of time. So again, with the stretching, another couple minutes or so, it doesn't need to be a ton of stretches. Maybe just pick a couple that you need. The quads are one that could, um, that are typical, that might need a good uh, stretch. And then also the glutes. Okay, so we've got quads, we've got hip flexors, 
and we got glutes. So the pigeon, pigeon pose. You just want to make sure you keep your hips square. The free leg draws back, and you're up on your hands, or you can lower down onto your forearms. Again, you just want to remind yourself not to get too carried away here. Carefully coming out of that, I want to just show you how you can do it in an elevated fashion as well, standing. You just need something solid to bring your leg up and on, whether it's a bar stool on top of a rowing machine, in my case, um, some sort of uh, tabletop, anything about 30 inches <clears throat> or a little bit less than that, depending on your height really works. And for some, some of you, your hips might be just too tight um, to do it in a standing position. So you want to come down and do the floor version that I did, or just flip over on your back and do the figure four stretch. All right. So whatever feels best, effective, efficient from there. Nice quad stretch. You can choose to alternate the quad stretch or just hold it. You've been active enough in the foam rolling so that a static stretch would be just fine. You've also got the wall quad stretch that you can do or suspending your foot in a TRX or up on the chair sort of thing. From there, we want to kind of go into um, more of a warm up, what we think of as more of our traditional warm up and activation. So, crab walks super efficiently. Just put the band around your feet or just above your ankles and do one set going across the row. Bending the legs a little bit, hinging at the hips is going to get into your glutes a little bit faster. You want to make sure your abs are tight. In like 10 to 12 steps in each direction. All right, so good there. We also want to come down on the floor, warming up the back, the shoulder blade, shoulder muscle area with the wall slides. Just sliding the arms up and down. You want to exhale as the arms go up so you can draw the rib cage down. You don't want anything to be elevated like it's trying to jump out of your actual torso. Feel the glide in the shoulder blades. Feel those muscles breathing a sigh of relief that they're, you're giving them some attention before you put heavy weights or weights of any size, quite frankly, and try to do some effective strength training without warming up. And then gently release. So like eight to 10 of those. And then from there, particularly if you've got knee stuff going on where some of the exercises are uncomfortable on the knees just sitting keep one leg relaxed and then just contract this quad one quad while the other leg relax hold for a couple seconds and then release squeeze and release as I do that you see that my heel lifts off the ground a little bit everything is nice and tight here so like eight to 10 of those on each leg. Do them individually. And then after this little series, it's always good to do a little Quick cardio power set includes a little bit of impact, but 
first, grab your band here, palms up, squeeze. As you pull the band apart, you're squeezing the back. So the shoulder blades are kind of moving in from each other. When we did the wall slides, they're moving up and down. This, they're moving in and out. And then as I was alluding to, just some more rhythmical movement with a little power, and then you're kind of good to go. So maybe it's jogging forward, jogging back, shuffle, and just kind of alternating between that Or up to a minute. This really nice warm up period also allows your mind to adjust act to exactly what you're going to be doing for the next 30 to 60 minutes that you're going to work out. And then from there, maybe just some pogo jumps here. So legs are soft, just little jumps up and down. Count 20. And then you might go for some kettlebell swings, or if you have a space that's appropriate that wouldn't be too disruptive, some nice ball slams. Of course, you gotta have something that's a little bit weighted, something that will create some bounce. So this is a medicine ball. All right. And at that point, you should be good and ready to go, but just do a quick check-in with yourself and anything else that you might need, just pay attention to that and then dive in to the meat and potatoes of your workout, feeling confident that the body is very satisfied with you for taking that time. Your workout is going to be that much better. Your results are going to be that much better. Less pain, less chance of injury.